madu meka la pena la amala nana la runa la mafuma hadi eleng the ladies club mo na mo kana leng ya bubedi thank you so much for joining us as we continue to bring you all the game changers the trailblazers and the champions in women in sport mo e motle na le bisola ka ke le bohang mo tswedi now our topic today looks at women who overcame adversity broke through barriers and changed the game completely their bravery and dedication is a source of inspiration for anyone to reach higher really anyone regardless of your fraternity business sports anything because in this life there are absolutely no limits we'd like to hear your thoughts on what we'll be discussing today on social media platforms you can find us on a twitter at sport at sabc just use the hashtag the ladies club we also on facebook as sabc sport now we have a living legend with us today and we'll be chatting to Paralympic gold medalist and a game changer of note, love her to birth, Natalie Detroit. She's here to share her story, her journey. And today we're going to do it differently because I'd like us to work from 2020 all the way back. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Natalie Detroit. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. It's great to have you on the show. You have been beyond a source of inspiration to athletes, athletes with uh, disabilities that were born as disabled athletes, athletes, able-bodied athletes as, as they're known, to women around the world, men, children, in business alike. How has that been for you, looking at the years you've spent doing what you love? You know, I think it's, it's quite an interesting topic. And, you know, it's not one that you, you start life thinking you know what, I'm going to be this person that everybody looks up to. Sure. So I think it's, you've got to take it as it comes and, and take it day by day. And I think for me, it's important that I show just as much as others have been inspiration to me to mm. be that inspiration as well. So, um, you know, I've, I've had a few uh, top athletes actually not want to speak to me Why? Um, and say things, you know, bad things to me. So I always vowed that I would never, ever be that person. And Again, you know, I'm so grateful that people do see it as inspiration, do see that, you know, anything is achievable if you really can and if you put your mind to it. I like to call her an ambassador for change. We'll continue with our chat in a bit. For now, let's set the tone with an inspiring quote. And this one comes from Paralympian. That's the champion, Chantal Pedicleur. She says, if you have a strong commitment to your goals and dreams, if you wake up every day with a passion to do your job or your sport, Everything is possible. I'd love to find out what Natalie has to say about it because let's have a quick look at Chantal. The Pericler, because she is the most successful wheelchair racer of all time. She boasts multiple medals from all three of the world's top athletics competitions, the Olympics, the Paralympic Games, the World Champs, and the Commonwealth Games. She retired back after the 2008 Olympic Games in Beijing with a total of 21 medals. Quick thoughts on that quote, a quick one before we go to a quick break. She's an amazing athlete, um, you know, to come back to, to compete for so many years, to stay focused, um, you know, and I think that that quote embodies ultimately who she is and ultimately what she's also achieved. So it's been, uh, uh, to watch her, it's been absolutely phenomenal. And you talk about ambassadors, but, um, you know, there's quite a handful of, of ambassadors out there that have been fortunate, I think, for, for others to see and be, be fortunate to compete on, on the top level. Absolutely. Now, the Ladies Club would also like to salute our very top superstars in football, Tembi Khatlana, who is sitting in at her new club, that's LSL, SL, rather, Benfica. She took a career to new heights when she joined the Portuguese side just last month after making a move from the Chinese outfit Beijing, BG Phoenix. And this marked another milestone in the incredible rise of the 2018 CAF African Women's Player of the Year, also nominated in 2019. And now we're in 2020, we continue to salute Banyana Banyana players who've made the strides in gaining international contracts. And those are not easy ones because when they move internationally, that means they're moving into leagues that are played professionally, unlike the current one at home. That is just starting. We're going to take a quick break. Remember, hashtag the ladies club. It is uh, on SABC2 and it's on social media at sport at SABC. On Facebook, it is SABC Sport at Le Bomotswari. Your thoughts, your questions, your views on the lady that will be giving us everything about the life that she's had as a true South African athlete. Natalie Detoy coming up right after this. Natalie 
Ajito is undoubtedly one of the most recognizable figures in South African sports. She can hardly go to a gym without anyone just stopping her to just say, hey, am I doing this strat? Okay, this stroke? Okay. She became, of course, a rising star in swimming when she was still very young, representing South Africa at the Commonwealth Games and ha held in K K Kuala Lumpur back in 98 as a young 14-year-old. Now, just looking at the history, her left leg was amputated at the knee following a tragic scooter accident. Uh, a month later, after her 17th birthday, she was determined, though, to overcome her setback and was back in the pool a few months after the accident. That on its own. I don't know anyone else that would be able to do that. She went to break new ground in swimming. After that, even making history by becoming the first female amputee to compete at Able Bodied Games. Natalie, and I, as I read that introduction, it is still so difficult for me to fathom how you could go through something so tragic and then continue with life. I think it's been a long road. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people think, how did you just get up and go? Yeah. And I don't think they realize that it's a choice that you take every day. It's a choice that yeah. when you wake up, yeah. you know, you're going to have a bad day. And ultimately, how do I come back from it? Yeah. How do I become something that you know, I want to become. Mm. Um, and I think I was just fortunate that I, I sort of was born to a family that never, ever said to me, I couldn't, that it was That's amazing. If you enjoy, let's do it. You just know, at school, it. I did netball. I, you know, I swam, I played music. Yeah. I, I did all of that. And I was fortunate that yes, my parents couldn't drive me everywhere. So yeah. I used to just spend the whole day at school playing whatever sport yeah. I needed to play or wait for a few hours before training sessions. Um, and ultimately, I just loved what I did. I, you know, I grew up as time went on. I didn't grow up too early. Um, and as a youngster, you know, I trained one hour a day for five days a week. So it wasn't the four hours that, that kids are doing nowadays. Yeah. Um, so yes, you know, you look back on it and you think, wow, um, you know, it is, every moment is, is special. And, you know, all the awards, all the trophies, they all have a special place because mm. you know the work that went into it. You know the people that were behind the scenes that were, you know, trying to help that, you know, were there as a shoulder to cry on. Um, you know, the, the early mornings, um, the late nights. Mm. And I think only when you're in it are you able to actually do it. So it's about putting your head down and just grinding and just doing what you can do. But there's probably a 16-year-old now, a 17-year-old, who's going through something, something tragic, traumatic, and they had their eyes set on an Olympic wearing the green and gold. How do you then advise them that, A, it's either still possible, but maybe it's not, because you, yours was still possible because you continued swimming as much as you did other sporting codes. You continued swimming. Then maybe it was hockey. They can no longer play hockey. How do you then say reactivate your mind and align it to this kind of route? You know, I think if I can use retiring yeah. as an example, because that probably brings you back to a similar situation. No matter how prepared you are, you're never prepared. Um, you know, if you have an injury, you always think, oh, if I hadn't had this injury, you know, I'd be here, I'd be doing this. Um, you know, when I retired, I thought I had planned at the age of, you know, 28, I would yeah. be gone. I'd be, have achieved everything I yeah. wanted to achieve. I was going to move into business and I was going to become the success in business. And you slowly but surely have to give it time and you have to realize that, hang on, you know what, I'm starting all over again. But people don't see me as starting all over again. They think that I'm just going to be this successful person at everything. So, mm. but you still have to learn. That's um, true. And so how do you balance that? And that is time. Time is the balance. Time is realizing how can I, you know, create a pathway mm. through all of this. And I think that's something that sport teaches one yeah. is, is to be patient. Um, yeah. It's not always to have that finite goal because yeah. you should have the small goals that lead up to that finite goal. And sometimes when that finite goal is just too far away, you focus very much on the short term. What I suggest is you take all the lessons that you learn through your sporting career, th through your school career, through people that you meet. Take the positives and, and really use those in challenging times because those come back and those ultimately make you want to grow faster, further um, mm. and make you want to go further as well and have those down moments. All right. I also want to talk about, because there's so much that you're doing post the swimming, post the accolades and the gold medals, uh, one of the, the standouts in your career, when you sit back now, because she hasn't swam <laughs> in many years now. 
I even want to get into that, why she hasn't been in a pool for so long, because life happens. But what has been the most outstanding moments you look back and you say, that's it? You know, I, I recently have just been back to the sea. I'm obviously moving up to Johannesburg. You don't wow. get to the beach often. And you realize when you get into the sea what it was like to compete overseas and wow. competes in open water. And, you know, the flooding back of memories of the hours that you trained in a swimming pool, that you grazed all the skin off the bottom of your feet because you did so many tumble turns so to try and make up the 10 kilometer training sessions. So it is, it is quite an interesting road. Um, yes, I haven't been in water, but they're fun memories, even yeah. though some of them were really, really tough. Yeah. Um, they were memories of, of challenges. And I think what's the, what, what really sticks out mm. is going to the Olympics. Yeah. Um, I had just qualified for, well, not qualified. I just won the Robin Island swim. And I mm. know everybody said to me, don't swim it because you need to go to the trials and you need to be rested. You won't be, and you won't be too tired. And you won't have the energy. Out. And, you know, my, my small group said to me, just do it. You know, it's open water. It's practice. You know, even though it's nine degree water, Ugh, off you freezing. go. Um, and those were the moments that like made qualification yeah. so much more worth it. Um, you know, you speak to a lot of, uh, very well um, or athletes with lots of accolades and yeah. a lot of them say to them they achieved it because everybody said they couldn't and and ultimately it's a, a lot of what the driving force is behind trying to achieve you've been asked this a lot of times being able to swim against able-bodied swimmers was that anything that was heavy on you or it was it something that you could do before. So it was not a big deal, like we still even making it a big deal in 2020. You know, when I was younger, um, the goal was, let's see what you can do. Yeah. And I was just fortunate that I could compete. Um, so it wasn't about one leg, two legs. Yeah. It wasn't, we yeah. never thought of things like yeah. that. You know, it was, yeah. how do I better my times in the pool? Um, it doesn't matter who's there. It doesn't yeah. matter. And, you know, I've been asked a lot of times, what did the others think? And, you know, I was hoping that they didn't think, oh, we have to swim any slower. Mm. Um, you know, if I take, for example, qualifying in Seville for the Olympic mm. Games, and everybody, you know, said to me, do you think that they started off slowly because they thought they could beat no. you? And I think at the end of the day, you know, I was very fortunate that I was able to keep up. And sometimes it took that extra hour of training every day to try and keep up with everybody else because it wasn't the endurance, it was the rate at which I could pick up speed. Mm. So mm. the rate at which someone with two legs can pick up speed is probably much faster than what yeah. I ever could. So I would have to sprint from way before to be able to keep up with everybody. Um, and those were the small things that started coming together. So it was important to have the base of training but then to start working on the small things that was required in order to keep up with everybody. Mm. There's also the Laureate Sports Awards. She's had an incredible time winning some of the best accolades within that uh, Laureate Sports Awards. But the big one is in 2020. We get into it because it's awarding incredible athletes that have done well in the past two decades, 20 years. All of that coming right after this. It is time to take a look at the movers and shakers who led the way for women in sport. And our trailblazer today is Polish table tennis star Natalia Patika, who is no stranger to breaking records at the Paralympics, born without a right hand and forearm. Did not keep her, though, from realizing her dreams. She competes on the International Table Tennis World Tour, including the 2018 European Championships. When you hear athletes like this, post your swimming career, what comes to mind and especially the legacy and the influence you might have had well that particular athlete um, and yeah. we were at the games in 2008 together at the olympics wow. so the two paralympic athletes and we generally did a lot of the media and everything together wow. so it's strange to very similar names yeah. um but yes you know i think there's lots of trailblazers out there it, sure. it is a, a massively positive um you know thing that people can see and people can look up to and and realize that your boundary is what you set for yourself ultimately. Um, 
And yes, some disabilities create boundaries mm. and some are, are more True. challenging than others. True. Um, so again, you know, very fortunate that I was able to compete with able-bodied and a lot of the, the disabled that can compete with able-bodied, they're just very fortunate to be able to do that. So um, yes, it's inspiring. And I think at the end of the day, more and more is going to happen because more and more realize that, hang on, we're able to True. and and we can. You are a role model to many, an inspiration to even myself. Who was your role model? I had a few role models oh, and yeah. I still have role models. I really do believe in them in different shapes and forms. And, you know, sometimes uh, you look back and you think, I really don't want to be like that. And, yeah. and some you do want to be like. True. And someone such as Susie O'Neill, yeah. I raced against her wow. back in 1998 at the Commonwealth Games. I, I was probably that. two lanes from her. Sure. And uh, I managed to meet her in London. She was part of the media team and I got to meet her. Um, you know, we would see a whole host of women that one looks up to. Um, mm. I, I'm sure a picture would be shown of Ina Palman. Um, you know, her factory was literally, I think, three doorsteps away from wow. my family home. So there's a lot of people that have had that type of influence. Yeah, in me. your um, life. Absolutely. And then my manager, um, I think, you know, from, uh, well, the last couple of years, I yeah. think seeing the brand and seeing you know, who I could possibly be and who I really am um, was really important because one can only really move forward if you know that. Um, swimming was, I think, my crutch as well. So mm. I knew eventually if I trained three hours, I would swim this time. If I trained four hours a day, wow. I would swim that time. So it was it was very manageable in, in many instances. And when you get up on a block, you know exactly more or less how you'd yeah. be able to compete. Um, so it was important, I think, to get to know me. and. And in, you know, where would I go past swimming or post swimming? Yeah. Um, because yeah. I knew I wasn't going to swim for past 28 or the age of 28. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, family and everybody has molded my life in, in many different ways. Mm. Um, I've had the very successful person say to me, but Natalie, you're a success. Surely you know what it is about you that makes you a success. And you're like, um, no, no. Do you, would, you, would you perhaps want to tell me what yes, it is, you yeah. know, make life a little easier. <laughs> But, you know, it's, it's those things that, that one has to try and find out. And it's challenging. And that's why I said time. Time is, you know, they say time heals everything. Mm. But time ultimately also allows you to realize and allows you to, to go through the challenging, to look at mm. the forward to the future and also be in the present. And to see that's all important. three at the same time is, is really important, especially in tough moments. Let's talk about... You being on the short list for the Laureus Sporty Moment of Two Decades. When I saw that list, I'm scratching my head now. <laughs> I thought, oh my goodness, incredible athletes from all ages throughout the world. And you've made the short list. And I think, you know, this is from the top 20 list and you see the amazing athletes that are part of that list. Um, you know, even some that I looked up to and mm. some that are still in the sport that I even look up to and think, for example, in, in Ironman or triathlon, yeah, yeah, you know, it's three yeah. sports, it's crazy yeah. amount. You know, the, there's a young girl um, and, and ultimately it is, you know, I would never be able to stand up against those athletes um, and very surprised. And I think, you know, very humbled. That and we can still vote. It's absolutely, we can still vote. So, so very humbled to be in the top 10. Um, Laureus.com forward slash vote. Uh, is the top 10 yeah. and uh, I believe there's another five days yeah. uh, to go yeah. in terms of voting and then yeah. it's the top five. Um, that we will need to be, vote South Africa. That will be off to We Berlin. need to vote. <laughs> so yes, Laureus is, has been great. Yeah. Um, international, South Africa. Um, obviously it was started by South Africans uh, 20 years ago um, with the former, well, with Nelson the patron and, and former president Nelson Mandela. So sport is the power to change the world and Amen. sports people are truly amazing and you know, again, just humbled to be a part of the top 10. All right, post swimming, um, what I saw you do then was to help within the administration of athletes, head of athletes commission within the ASCOC. Um, how, how did that happen? So I was asked if I would uh, chair the commission. I think very challenging within South Africa. It has been a bit of a challenge in terms of uh, getting a commission started. You know, we have yeah. a lot of challenges here and I think athletes need to believe in a system in order to, to be a part of something. And a lot of us have, I think, have been burnt in many ways. Mm. And, you know, you don't really want to become part of an organization because they were against you. There's a lot of true, feelings true. And, yeah. and thoughts that go into it. But 
I think the decision was that, you know, you want to change. You want to make the change. better for, and be the change for the other athletes to grow. Um, you know, we have we had uh, goals in mind uh, at the beginning of the four years and we're pretty much on par with those that's great so building up the commission building up in you know for the next four years so that there can be a commission um there can be a structure they can mm. filter right into the ioc into the ipc so that's something that we've been working hard on and uh you know, it's, it's been a lot of behind the scenes trying to mm. set up those relationships because relationships mm. are really, really important, um, as well as what it is we really want to focus on, what is needed within South Africa um, and, and what it is that the Athletics Commission stands for ultimately. Yeah. So, so that's what we've been working on um, in, in the background, as I say. Mm. Um, so as much as you serve as part of SASCOC, it is, uh, you know, an organization that has, you know, challenging in terms of funds, in yeah. terms of things yeah. like that. Um, and just hoping for it to, to get better because ultimately that is where our athletes sit for the Olympics and Paralympics um, and Commonwealth Games. So we have to do good for our athletes. And, and that is one of the biggest important legacies that yeah. I would love to leave behind is, you know, all the lessons that you learn through sport to plow it back, mm. not just to teach you how to swim, but the lessons mentally, physically, everything to be able to plow back and help others. Okay, you've told us your legacy. We've got about 40 seconds left before we say goodbye. What do you still want to achieve for Net Lady Toy in 2020? I just want to become what I would call a powerhouse in, in communications, in PR, in, in uh, the future. Um, and, you know, be that success that I believe is, is for myself. It might not be the same powerhouse that other people believe. Yeah. Um, but I have goals and I have dreams that I'd love to achieve. And, you know, show people that I'm not just the swimmer. Um, yeah, that yeah. I can be more and and keep inspiring and keep showing people that hopefully, you know, they can, if they set their mind to it, they can achieve whatever they want to believe. And your eyes on 2020 Tokyo? Uh, uh, 2020 Tokyo is looking, I think, really good, actually. Um, I think there's a lot of challenges, a lot of potentials. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be there for the, the Paralympic Games as part of the, the IPC yeah. Athletes Commission. But awesome. uh, I think from that perspective, uh, you know, South Africa does phenomenally. And it's all about on the day in that specific race. And, you know, we can keep supporting South Africa. Sure. Um, you know, no matter what happens, we are proudly South African. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being the change that we all want to see, for continuously inspiring us, the women that are watching, the kids, the moms. Thank you so much for everything. Thank you. And thanks again for the show. I think it's amazing inspiration and, and keep going. Well, well, we'll try. We definitely will try. Thank you so much. That's Net Lady Toy. She is the, the change that we all want to see, a powerhouse in women in sport and working outside of sport right now, but still so passionate about being the difference in what we see tomorrow in tomorrow's generations. But that's all the time we have for you this week. Thank you so much for spending it, spending it with us. You're obviously welcome to send through your ideas of trailblazers and stories about women that continue to inspire you. Let's do this again next week, same time at 10.30 when I'm going to be Till then, remember that greatness is earned but never given. I'm Lebo Mutsweli for SABC Sport. Goodbye.